You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is episode number 582. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Wait! Wait. Have you gotten your drone pilot field kit yet? Do you have all the documents necessary so if some crazed civilian or an uneducated officer doesn't know about your drone flying, do you have the field kit, the paperwork to back up what you are legally able to do? If you don't, go to dronepilotfieldkit.com right now and download your drone pilot field kit completely for free. All you got to do is enter your email address and what do you get? 700 pages of documents so you can literally throw the book at people who question your drone flying. No, that's not what you're supposed to do. What you can do is customize the whole thing to put your registration information in there, your licensing information. You're going to have all of the Part 107 law. You're going to have the National Forest Commercial Filming Rights. You're going to have the National Park Service rules. You're going to have everything that you need to make decisions in the field, but also to back it up to local authorities if they aren't educated. You know what else is in there? Even what the FAA sent out to all police officers and police forces on how to determine whether a drone flight was illegal or not. So imagine if you were to pull that up to a cop and say, well, I think you're supposed to use this to determine whether my flight was illegal or not. So very good, very good information to have on you at all times. In fact, you're federally regulated to have your license and registration on you at all times. So why not have all the other law to back you up as well? Check it out. Dronepilotfieldkit.com. All right, Rob. Sorry for that rant. I'm ready for a burp now. No, not a rant at all. I think that's a great resource that uh, Drone U is giving out to people and doing it because Everybody should have it. We want everybody to be armed with the right information in Ooh. the event they need it. But it's not just about having it, right? It's about knowing what's in it. True. Understanding what's in it. True. So that ultimately you can explain it without showing it, but you have it to show if you need to. Exactly. Yep. And I hope the day comes I do get to literally throw the book at somebody. <laughs> <laughs> just say it. It would be kind of funny. So um, anyway, guys, welcome to another show. Today we're going to be talking about how do you really determine an exact location in airspace? What's the best app? What's the best thing to do? Uh, I'll give you my answer, but we're going to wait until after the question because, you know, my answer will be kind of quick. It's kind of a sort of like a swirling wind kind of question <sighs> in terms of what the right answer is and, and the development of apps that are supposedly coming and those that are coming are challenging in so many different ways. Every, every day there is a new YouTube video on when the apps are coming. Well, let's listen to the question and then we'll get into it in a little bit more detail. Cool. Hi, my name is David. I'm a Part 107 pilot. Um, I have a question about airspace. I was looking at some airspace that's uh, next to a non-towered airport, and it's it's E, but it's not E to surface. And I had questions, but I was a little confused, you know. And so I was looking for a reliable resource, such as an app that can give a go, no go on a certain part of an airspace, given a certain coordinate and altitude that you start at. And uh, I have. I haven't really found one. Um, many apps will show a distance from an airport, you know, within five miles, or they'll show an airspace type like A, B, or C, well, not A, but B, C, or D, and, but they may not give the floor or ceiling of same. I was wondering if there was an uh, app or a website that you were aware of that would give a vertical cross-section at a certain point. Um, if, is there any such app? Um, are we waiting for someone to build one uh, that can basically give a go, no go, and uh, maybe even you could put your cows in or whatever? Uh, anyway, that's my question. Thank you. It's a good question. And I don't know that it's changed a lot recently, but again, it's so. kind of a swirling wind kind of thing where we're hearing different things, but not a lot of substance to what actually comes out. The long, and the, sh the long and the short is, guys, you really need to know how to read airspace. And if you can read airspace really well, you're going to have a competitive advantage over many other people. And let me give you the example, and I've said this before. There is a huge sliver of airspace in San Diego's airspace that even to this day people still talk about in the UAV legal group. And no one has realized that there is flyable airspace in San Diego because they don't know how to read a chart. And it's absolutely phenomenal. It's phenomenal, like just how little 
people really understand airspace when the FAA has gone above and beyond to try to get people to understand it. That's why they put it in the test. Um, so where's the best place to go as far as you're concerned right now to, uh, assuming one understands airspace to a reasonable level, where would they go look? I always look at skyvector.com. Uh, now, the FAA does have a much more accurate system um, thanks to, I believe it's FAA.UAS. Let me look up the link actually really quick. I believe it's FAA. Oh, here it is. FAA.maps.arcgis. You can find uh, maps in here that give you information on if you were near an airport, where you could fly, where you couldn't fly. And they're really using those maps to aggregate data so that later on <clears throat> we can have an app to say, okay, I'm here, I'm in this square, the square says 300 feet, I only need to go to 100 feet. You go into the app and you get instantaneous airspace authorization. Glorious. That would be glorious. Um, people have said, oh, that's coming in December. Skyward.io uh, recently said they bid for the app uh, and they've been working on something. Uh, ArcGIS has said the same thing. Uh, and so has, uh, what's the one I'm missing? AirMap. AirMap is my favorite tool to use when determining airspace, but it's only the first level of information. So I normally go to air map first, and then I check the sectional um, via sky vector. And here's the thing, Ted, our certified flight instructor here at Dronio, Ted goes between sky vector and I think it's um, airnav.com. Let me just make sure. Sky vector and airnav.com. Let me make sure. Yes, he goes between those two all the time. And again, these are old, dilapidated, crappy websites, but they provide the greatest level and detail of information. It's just kind of like a forum-based style uh, information versus mm -hmm. uh, easily indexed and searchable style of information. You know, that being said, knowing airspace um, is really the biggest competitive advantage you could have second to flying really, really well. Interesting. Just, oh, yeah. and, and so go into that a little bit more. Why would it be that so high on the going, competitive level? So going back to this whole San Diego issue on the UAV Legal News Group, um, I actually wanted to prove a point. So I applied for an airspace authorization in the area that I knew I didn't need one. And I got an email back from the FAA that said, well, Paul, if you look at a sectional, you'll see from here to here, you don't actually need an authorization. And I replied, that's why I sent this in. I wanted to ensure I didn't need one. Um, then I went back and posted that into the UAV legal news group, and it really uh, upset some people because I told them, you don't need permission to fly in this area. And everyone contradicted me and said, yes, you do. You absolutely do. You're in class C airspace. And it's like, no, you're not. Read a sectional. <laughs> like, not in that little piece of pie. Correct. Right. As long as I was in that little piece of pie, I was good. And the funny thing is, I just shot another commercial in that same sliver of pie three weeks ago. Right. And multiple people have been like, oh, I got an offer to do a job in San Diego near Mission Bay, blah, 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 blah. And I can't do it because I can't get an airspace authorization. And I'm afraid some illegal pilot is going to do it. Well, I hate to say it, but some very educated pilot is going to do it. Um, and it just, it just goes to show that just like in all things in life, how much attention and detail you give to every little thing in life is going to have a massive effect on your success and the level of success. Absolutely. Okay. So those are the tools right now that most are using. Sky Vector, Air Nav. Air Nav. And you said Air Map as well. Air, I as normally the, for the app, right? Yeah, I normally check Air Map just really quick, which now Air Map is built into Hover, so you can get that through Hover. Um, but then I'm always going to Sky Vector because that gives me the information I truly need. Like, for example, when I was learning to fly at P-48 Peoria Airport um, in north of Phoenix, uh, it's funny because even Ted at the time was like, According to the airspace, you could literally fly off the end of the runway. But wow. if you're a hobbyist pilot, you're not supposed to be within five miles. Five miles, right. And I'm, I told Ted, I said, well, this is where we should film our taxiing down the runway. Like, this is here or Sedona Airport. I don't know which one. <laughs> so, well, you're already there. <laughs> yeah. So that makes the most sense. I still have to buy the casters for my Inspire One to actually roll down the runway. <laughs>
<laughs> like an osprey where you get it to turn too. You, you know that would that. be really cool. <laughs> that would be really cool. Just get a little actuator to move the mo- the motors forward. Right. <laughs> Maybe not necessary, but it would be fun. Oh man, would that be viral video? <laughs> I taxied my drone down the runway at an airport. So really, that's the answer to the question. Still at this point, early May 2017. You've got to kind of combine these different resources to truly figure it out. There's not an app. There's not a resource that really gives you everything you need to know, especially that's three-dimensional. True. And speculation says that this app is going to be available from the FAA in late September. That's what they're aiming for. Um, A lot of other people are saying December. So... I don't really care FAA as long as you get it right. I would rather you be late and get it right, frankly, because we are already dealing with significant problems because of this whole issue. And, um, I, I, you know, a lot of people want this. Yeah, so, everybody. Yeah. You, oh, I even talked to the air traffic controller. In fact, I'm not going to name the air, it. airport. Oh, they want it Absolutely bad. Absolutely, they want well, it. Well, because what I was told, I'm not going to name names here, it was that uh, ever since the airspace authorization came out, they actually got less notifications since even like the 333 days. So she's like, now more people are flying without us knowing about it. And that's a problem. She's like, wow. I just want to know. It. She, she was like, and she was talking to me, for example. She's like, for example, that job you did late last year at a stadium, for example, you know, you know, talking to me and us making it work worked. Right. But when people just go fly these things and I don't know about it, and I've got a helicopter coming in on approach f- by the military, and then they hit it, and it's like, well, we didn't know. You know, what are we supposed to do? Right. So I think that a lot of people really want this, and I think that's why the FAA is hauling butt to get it done. That's so. really. I have this image in my mind now of the air traffic controller screen, and they already have a lot of bunch of dots from the airplanes. <laughs> Can you imagine the additional dots from the drones? No, you would fill up the whole map. It would be blacked out. So that's going to be an interesting, that in and of itself is an interesting dilemma. You want to know another interesting dilemma? This isn't the first time the FAA has thrown their employees under the bus. Uh, And I actually learned this because of another podcast I'm working on with Ilker, uh, the the mold one. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, the FAA has some serious mold issues in air traffic control towers, and it actually sent someone to the hospital one time, and they never gave him disability benefits, and the person had to sue to prove that mold was an actual illness and like this, that, and the other. They got their way, but there's still mold in the air traffic control tower. Interesting. Isn't that funny? That is an interesting How little aside. All, <laughs> things connect together. It's just fascinating. Yes, <laughs> That's funny. It's a, it's a crazy connection, but hey, it's a connection. Cool. Anyway, guys, hope that helps you out in navigating the airspace. If you're not familiar with airspace or you're sitting here listening to this and you're like, you know, I'm just really not that confident. Between me and you, I go back and look at our airspace class all the time. I call Ted all the time. It's something that you'll always be learning as a pilot. And having Ted as a CFI and being a part of the DroneU community means that you have constant access to his class on airspace. And there is a reason DroneU hired Ted to do this. Mm -hmm. He's a certified flight instructor. He did all the videos for major airlines back in the 90s when these airlines were still nice to people and they didn't support drag and drop. <laughs> yeah, no, he's been in a he's been in the industry for 30 years yeah. doing some really cool stuff. And in talking to Ted because we get a lot of questions from people about how they maybe struggled on the exam even though they thought they really knew the airspace. Um and his point is always, you know what's interesting about this is for years, for decades, pilots have taken months to learn airspace. And now drone pilots are coming in studying for the 107 and trying to learn it in a few days. Yeah. And he said, that's not realistic. Nope. So the way you said, I go back to those trainings just to kind of refresh and learn more. And there's so many idiosyncrasies, obviously, within those maps. It takes time. And until there's an app that makes it instantaneous and you don't even have to know the airspace, which hopefully people will, you better learn it. Yeah. You it's better learn absolutely it. Necessary. But it's going to take time. And the sooner you realize that it has a direct effect on your ability to make money, the more serious that you'll take airspace. So like, think about Vic's uh, stuff he's got going on in Denver. You know, he's gotten airspace authorizations in places no one else has. And it's all because of how he went about it. Well, he's the master of relationship. He is. He's a great networker and he's gotten to know the right people in addition to understanding the airspace that he's working in. That is true, which is really important. We've already talked too much about relationships though. Really? I had a long rant in the last show about that. Remember? 
Anyway, that's going to do it for us today, guys. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. And this is Ask Drone You.